So today I thought this would be a really good time to address some of the hate comments that I have got in the past two years since the bear market started and some comments that I get regularly. The reason why I wanted to address this and a few people might say I'm wrong to do this video but I wanted to clear a few things up because I understand being in the public eye by putting myself on this platform, by talking about stocks, there's going to be some element of that I'm going to get some abuse online. That's just part of the world that we live in today, uh, right or wrong, probably wrong, uh, that happens and it's something that I have to accept and I do accept, I don't really get too bothered about it. But what I wanted to address in this video is, especially in the last 12 months in particular, is sometimes some of the hate comments that spread big lies in the comment section and I wanted to really address that because there's been getting hateful comments which I can accept thick skin but when people then tell lies about you in the comment section is the part that I wanted to address today so hopefully hopefully this video clears a few things up and also gives my kind of response to that because I wanted to clarify a few issues that if you ever see one of these comments in the comment section you kind of know a other side to that kind of issue. So first of all, the hate comments have in particular happened during 2022. Um, I would say that I didn't really get that many before the bear market happened. So why was there an increase in hate comments in 2022? Well, the stock market crashed. We had the worst stock market crash in 2022 that we've seen for 2008. So because that happened, a lot of stocks went down. Now, particularly some stocks that I talked about did go down in that time frame, uh, and some of them haven't recovered. And I knew that was going to happen as, as an investor, especially as a more of a growth investor. I know my stocks are going to come under the most pressure during a bear market, and I knew I would hit some losers. And, and that, that's that definitely what happened. And we'll get onto that in a bit more, in a little bit more detail. But what then happened is because I think the bear market happened it put a lot of people under pressure and sometimes I think the people that were under pressure was maybe people that bought 50% in the portfolio into a very high risk stock and didn't balance up the risk or they bought a certain stock that maybe I was talking about and they were upset that that stock went down and because that stock went down they needed someone to blame uh, come to me take it out on me or I'm down and it's your fault because you talked about the stock that was kind of the element. There was other, there's the other element of that there's also just generally nasty people that enjoy going into a YouTube comment section and putting hateful comments in there. And there's also the element of that probably people have just had a bad day. Uh, the wife has had a go at them since they've got in and then they've looked at the portfolio and the portfolio's gone down and they just need somewhere to put it. So really for me in 2022, uh, I basically had a comment section full of really negative comments. Uh, now we're in 2023, 2024, obviously um, a lot of my picks that I've done again in the last few years have gone back to how they were, which were absolutely amazing and even some of the picks that I bought in the bear market have done absolutely amazing. So the comment section is quite in a positive place once again. Uh, the comment section always seems to reflect the market market uh, funny enough um, and especially when you look at yesterday's video like hims and hairs a uh, very positive comment section there was no negative comments on that video because everyone's happy the stock is up everyone's happy if we ever have a stock that goes down and I talk about it you see the negative comments on that video in particular and an example for that is when the other day I was talking about a stock that was down we had a tough market for a couple of days all of a sudden all these people that were really negative came out and I don't know if that's just a combination of people that have just lost money previously, people that just enjoy being hateful, or people that are generally maybe just jealous because of the success that I'm now having in the market. I think that could potentially be another reason why. Um, but overall, I've got to say like in the comment section in general, there's these kind of particular lies that are always told, and those are the ones that I kind of want to focus on today. So I hope you enjoyed the video, let's get started. So I'm going to show you this comment in particular which says, utter common crap. Now. This was on the UK best investing apps for 2024. For me, I think Trading212 is the best platform. Now, I do have an affiliate link with Trading212, but even before that, I still thought Trading212 was the best platform. And even now that I have the affiliate link and I recommend it, I personally use Trading212. You'll notice this about me is that I only really recommend products I use myself. Same for Wall Street, Trading212. Trading212 is the broker that I personally use. It's the one that I have the most money in. So I always recommend products I use compared to a lot of other YouTubers that were taking payments to use 
uh, other platforms like we Weeble, for example, or the crypto one that was the big scam, was it Coinbase? I can't even remember. Um, there was all these kind of platforms, people were taking payments to promote that they don't even you know, use themselves. Personally for me, this is one that I do use and I, I, I was really positive on it. And someone said, utter common crap. Now, like I said, I have uh, no issue that if someone thinks uh, saying actually I think free trade is better but what made me laugh is this next comment which is you have the IQ of a peanut to believe this rubbish now I don't know what this guy's been looking at but if you go on trading to one two on Trustpilot 4.6 stars which is pretty good and if you look at high views lands down 4.1 stars and if you go look at something like Coinbase which I believe is a platform that was being promoted and was absolutely terrible uh, had 1.5 stars which is uh, obviously shocking so uh, just a little bit of backup there to my opinion that yeah I use this platform myself and also when you look at some of the credible reviews here they also agree so yeah that's just a, a little bit of a, a taste of what's to come so if you look at this one here which says a uh, terrible video this is on my in mode time to buy so it says stock price drops further 50 plus percent after this video after the buy advice of the creator <laughs> horrible accent i don't want you to talk about me i think i got the best platform best accent in the world and um, wrong understanding why the stock price uh, by the way nice there a little bit of english going on here price of the company was decreasing uh, put a nice comment back but this makes me laugh i get this all the time so for example i've seen this often i've had a lot of negativity around in mode and the reason why is because in mode's gone down which fair enough, it hasn't had a good time at the moment. Now what makes you laugh is that all of a sudden this negativity and saying, oh, in mode was a terrible pick and everything like that has happened in the last year when the stock price has gone down. Now what, may, what makes you laugh is that some, somehow this has turned, and I, I hear this all the time, I am down about 4% on in mode. And for some reason, this is a terrible pick. Like I've owned this stock for four years now and I'm down 4% on it. And this gets called a terrible, I hear this all the time. As soon as the stock goes down, it's a terrible pick and it's down 4%. If I named you all the stocks that I made 4%, 10%, 20% on, I could have a list of a good 20, 30 stocks. And I never talk about them because I just think it's not really that much to talk about. And the other thing about in mode is that what makes me laugh is that all of a sudden this has come a bad stock. Now it's down 4%. I was like, guys, does no one remember two, three years ago when I was selling 10% of InMode for like a 300, 400% return and now all of a sudden it's a bad stock? It, it just makes me laugh how suddenly that wherever the share price is, that's where it's a good stock or a bad stock. It doesn't matter what's happened previously to that, if you've made money on it previously. And even if you're down only slightly on a position, somehow it comes a terrible loser. Oh, it's down 4%, that's a terrible loser. What's going on? That's a terrible pick. It's, it's absolutely insane. Now this is where it gets peak. This this, this is where it, it just absolutely makes me laugh. So I got this comment here from a, a guy called Andrew Joseph, which is following you has lost me a lot of money, right? Now, this is crazy because I see all this time, I see the people that come onto my videos regularly, say somehow it's a terrible video, the stock picks are terrible, yet they'll come on and watch every video. Surely, you are not going to waste your time, your limited time, coming to watch someone that you think their opinion is atrocious. And this is a perfect example. There's a few people I could name that I see often that do this. And then this is a crazy thing about uh, Andrew Joseph is if you go on here and you come onto the Discord and the Patreon members, guess who's a member on the Patreon? Andy J. <laughs> so for someone that says that following you has lost a lot of money, they're still willing to pay five pound to be in that guy's patron. <laughs> I, yeah, crazy, right? Now, this is where it gets more crazy. So, example, name naming some losers. Now, I've had some losers here uh, I in, in the last few years, 100%. Uh, you see here, gang, a great, terrible loser, terrible pick by me, no problem at all with that. Corsair, I mean, Corsair, I'm down, what, 30% on? and somehow that's a terrible loser. I mean, if I was to name all the stocks I made 30, I never name the stocks really that I made 30% on because I don't really consider it a big return or a big loss. But if we're gonna name stocks that are down 30%, well, let's you know look at the stocks that have been up 30% and we sold off. I mean, we've sold so far this year, Etsy, that was a 30%. Dropbox was another 30%. Moonpig was another 50%. Revolution Beauty was another 100, 90, 100%. 100%.
We had Celsius that was another 50% up to 100% at times in the last 12 months. We've had HIMS, 114% return in the last few months. We've had DraftKings, over 50% return in the last couple of months. We've had Hotel Chocolate that was bought out. Uh, what was that, 30, 40% return on that one? Like, it's that's crazy. If, we, if we're calling 30% big losers, that's uh, crazy. Skills, 100% skills, bad position. Mobico Group, like, I sold like 20% off for 4% loss, like two months ago. Are we, are we seriously gonna say a company that's down 4% is a terrible loser? I mean, I think right now, I think it has fallen back a bit, but I, I think I'm still down like maybe 16% on it. Like, do we call a stock that's down 16% a terrible loser? I don't know. Boohoo, like Boohoo, a terrible loser. Like, it's crazy because like I owned Boohoo for quite a long time. I bought the stock and I made 100% return on it and I sold it out. Uh, I then bought back in and I was trimming Boohoo for 40, 50% profit. Like, does any stocks that you made profit on before just totally get ignored? It might be a terrible loser, but it was also a, a massive gainer for us. And granted, I will if I was to sell my position now, I would lose more money than what I uh, have made on it. But do we call it a terrible loser, even though previously it's been sold out for a 100% return? And there was multiple times in 2021 where it was sold for a 50% profit. It just seems like any time that you make money, it's forgotten about, and whenever it's a loser, it's the worst investment ever. Crazy. Now, this is the crazy thing. I see people that say, yeah, it's a terrible investment and all that, and then only recently, what share price did, uh, did I buy that trace at? Which, by the way, since that time frame, is another stock that's up over 48%. If you look at here, wow, fab job, everyone. I'm up 46%, which is on hims and hairs. Which, once again, by the way, that was in 2000. 23 uh, stock obviously is up mega in the last few days love the alpha wave video i'm going to start a position today on the 6th of february so this is someone that's saying that i have a terrible investment and then commenting and saying that they enjoyed my video and they're going to start a position in alpha wave on the 2nd of february which um i'll try go back a little bit to the 2nd of february since uh, i started owning a uh, alpha wave and yeah i mean it's up 78 percent since that time frame so it's like well what the audacity to say someone's a terrible investor then want to carry on watching them and then pay to actually be on the patreon and then clearly buying some of the stocks that i'm talking about it's just it's just absolutely insane i mean uh, i don't know if and andy's just trying to practice his acting skills there i don't i don't know what's going on here but all of me, I'd say, you know, the big thing is to, you know, judge my five biggest investments in the last 12 months. If you judge the, big, the 12 biggest investments in the last five months, you know, you look at the king. You know, this was a stock that got absolutely pounded in 2022. And uh, what's this right now? Up 50%. Absolutely crazy. You know, you look at hims and hairs, you know, fabulous few days. Once again, you look at hims and hairs up uh, 114, 15% right now. Absolutely crazy. You know, you look at PayPal. This is the only, out of my top five biggest holdings right now is the only stock that's down. And I think it's down 18% and in one portfolio, I actually think it's up like 6%. Um, so it's not even that much. And that's quite a newest position in the portfolio as well, um, which clearly if it's down 18% is gonna be classed as a mega loser, unfortunately. And uh, DraftKings and Hims are, well, whatever, 100%, 100% that's absolutely nothing. Meta stock, uh, I've got one stock that's up to, one position that's up 200% and the other one that's 130%. Google and Melly are pretty much tied in fifth place for the, my biggest positions. Google's up 30% and that's with uh, a dip that's been going on in the last few days. Mercado Libra's up 50 something percent and that's after the dip off earnings, that was up 80%. So it's like, Everyone always talks about these couple of stocks. And then when you look at the, realistically, the rebound after this crash, like the, the top five holdings in the portfolio are, are you know, absolutely uh, up, up absolutely mega at the moment. So I thought I'd just kind of clear that up because like I said, quite often I see these stocks mentioned as big losers that are down like 20%. And it's like, well, if I was to write on this whiteboard, the stocks that I made money on over 20%, the, the, you know, the whiteboard would be full. It'd be absolutely full. And then realistically, should you not be judging the biggest holdings in the portfolio, you know, how they're, how, how they're actually doing. Now, ultimately, I think a few of these people are just uh, maybe not realise that you do have losers in the stock market. I think that's also what it kind of comes down to. I think that realistically, in the last two, three years, I've had six big losers in the portfolio, which isn't good. Uh, but realistically, we've gone through one of the worst stock market crashes ever the worst stock market crash since 2008, and 
you are going to get losers in that time frame and that's something that you've got to accept so you are going to have losers but realistically when you look at the youtube channel as a whole i must have talked about maybe 60 different stocks on this portfolio in, in this youtube channel at least that i've owned so if you say like out of 60 stocks six have gone wrong that's a nine out of, that's a 90 percent hit rate I mean, isn't that pretty impressive? And let's just say like, even now, let's say a few more stocks go wrong and 12 go wrong. That's still an 80% hit rate. I mean, I think a few people might not realize that an 80% hit rate is pretty good in the stock market. Like if you have a six out of 10 hit rate, you're probably gonna do really well in the stock market. If you get a seven or eight out of 10 in the stock market, you're gonna do very well and that's my aim and like I said I look at what I've done on this YouTube channel and I, I think it's not bad at all and especially when you look at go okay out of all them stocks out of all the hit rates which are the stocks with the highest conviction rate and especially if those high conviction rates hit then you're doing really well and I think sometimes people don't realize and don't accept that you are gonna get things wrong in the stock market <laughs> I think that's what people sometimes struggle with and like I said, I think that I always see these six stocks mentioned and it's like, well, what about the other 54 stocks that I've talked about on the YouTube channel? <laughs> I never see people mention about other stocks that have been an absolute hit, which is absolutely crazy. So yeah, I generally don't know what some people are trying to do with this kind of issue. I don't know if they are just trying to recover from a stock they went too heavy on and trying to put the blame on someone. I don't know if they just enjoy being negative. I don't know if they just have a tough life that they need to vent out somewhere and, and that is a place. But yeah, I just wanted to correct a few things because like I said, I see a few people that just put something in the comment section with no context and say something's a bad stock. And that stock can be a stock that has done absolutely amazing in the last two years and now it's going through a tough patch. All of a sudden it's a bad pick even though it was sold out for 400% profit before. Or, or what can happen is you have these three or four stocks or whatever it is, you know, the six stocks that have done terribly mentioned in the comment section. It's like, well, yeah, you know, hold my hands up. There's some stocks that got bad, have done bad. And in the bear market, I expect to have some stocks that don't perform. But how about you name the other 54 stocks that have been mentioned that have done well? Because when you compare them six stocks to the 54 that they mentioned, it's not that bad of a ratio. And when you go and look someone now and look at how they've done and you look at the top five holdings and you look at how the top five holdings are holding up, you're like, that's that's not a bad top five holdings to have in the stock market right now. So yeah, I just wanted to make this video to put a little bit of a correction to some of the things that are said out there because I think some of them are pretty unfair and uh, lies really, and I wanted to correct some of those lies. Like I said, I, I accept, I'm accept, accepting that, you know, in the public eye, you are gonna get hate comments, but I wanted to correct some of the lies that sometimes put out there, which uh, do make me laugh anyway. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video guys. See you in a bit. <laughs>